Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Today we're going to make a carrot sheet cake with cream cheese frosting, and this is what it looks like. This cake is wonderfully moist and it's full of flavor. It's got grated carrots, we've got uh, dried coconut, we've got crushed pineapple, chopped nuts, and lots of ground cinnamon, and of course, that tangy sweet cream cheese frosting. So the first thing that you will need to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you're going to need a nine by 13 inch, which is 23 by 33 centimeter baking pan. And you can butter the inside of your pan, or I'm just gonna spray mine with one of these non-stick sprays. Let's make sure you get in the corners. And then I'm just gonna line the bottom of the pan with a piece of parchment paper. That way we'll make sure the cake does not stick to our pan. So now, this batter is really easy to make. It's simply a matter of mixing everything together. So if you have a stand mixer like I have, you use your paddle attachment. You could use a hand mixer or really for this because it's just stirring everything together, you just have a large bowl with a wooden spoon. So the uh, first thing that we are going to do is mix all of our wet ingredients together. So you will need three large eggs. That would be 165 grams by weight. Have your eggs at room temperature. Let's put that in there. And then for flavoring, I'm adding one tablespoon, 11 grams of pure vanilla extract. So if you don't want a vanilla flavor, you can leave that out. Um, I'm at actually adding some buttermilk to this. It really gives it a nice moist texture. So you will need three quarters of a cup, which is 180 milliliters of buttermilk and have that at room temperature. You can buy buttermilk. You could use buttermilk powder or you could just take three quarters of a cup, 180 milliliters of just regular milk, add three quarters of a tablespoon of either lemon juice or vinegar. Just stir it together. Let it sit at, you know, about 10 minutes and it's ready to use. It's like sour milk, which is a good substitute for buttermilk. And then you will need carrot cakes. They're very nice and moist. And that comes from using not butter, but we're using oil as the fat. So three quarters of a cup, 180 milliliters of a flavorless oil. So that could be corn, vegetable, canola. You could use a safflower, or you could even use a light olive oil. Dump that in too. And then you will need two cups, 400 grams of granulated white sugar. I'm going to add that with the wet, and that way when we mix it together, it will dissolve into the other, uh, into the wet ingredients. So now what we're gonna do is beat this on low speed. All I wanna do is make sure everything's all mixed together. So that won't take very long. Okay, so everything's all mixed together. Let's give that a quick scrape. As always, when you're making a batter, you know, periodically scrape down the sides and bottom of your bowl to make sure everything's mixed together. And then for our dry ingredients, in a separate bowl, I'm going to put, because I'm going to sift the dry ingredients together. I have two and a half cups, which is 325 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. I'm just using a strainer. I mean, if you actually have a sifter, you can use that. Or really, you could just whisk all the uh, dry ingredients together. That's another alternative. And then you will need one teaspoon, four grams of baking soda, one and a half teaspoon, six grams of baking powder, three quarters of a teaspoon, three grams of salt, and then the cinnamon, I'm adding two teaspoons, four grams of ground cinnamon. I think a carrot cake needs cinnamon, and I like a little bit of heat, so I'm adding, you know, a fair amount. If you're not a big cinnamon fan, you could lessen that a little, or I have never tried leaving it out, so I really can't say what it would be like, because to me, a carrot cake has to have cinnamon. 
Oh, I'll just. Okay. That's good. I just need a spoon here. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to add all the flour at once because then, you know, it could come up in my face and to mix too long. So I'm going to add, you know, maybe a third of it. Just do it gradually. And then I'm just going, again, beat it on low speed. I don't want to get a lot of air. A carrot cake is very dense in texture, so really we're just mixing things together here. Okay, and in between, just give your bowl a scrape. Get all that flour down. And I'll add a little more. Again, on low speed. Okay. And the final bit. As you can see, the batter is beautiful, kind of honey color. color. And mix that in. Okay. As you can see here, the actual mixing of the batter is really easy. When you make a carrot cake, the time-consuming part is getting all the ingredients together. That's what I find. Once I have that, then the batter is just so easy. Okay, so now we're going to add all the good stuff that makes a carrot cake a carrot cake. First, of course, we need grated carrots. You will need to, you know, wash and then chop the ends off and then you need to peel them and then grate them. You can use a box grater or if you have a food processor that has a shredding uh, disc, that's what I use. It <laughs> makes it really easy. Otherwise, you will be with a box grater. It does take a little time. I, mine are kind of a medium grate. You could use a fine uh, great as well depending like of course with this it's a little thicker so that you're going to really see the uh, the little shreds of coconut in your uh, or coconut carrot in your carrot cake so either way just dump that in so you need two cups which is 270 grams or you if you want to weigh it is really easy or you could nine about nine and a half ounces of grated carrot and then I like to add some dried coconut. I'm adding one cup, 70 grams. I'm using a dried unsweetened coconut and you can use, I'm using the flake, you could use the shredded as well. I like that because it's, it, you know, it's not adding too much sweetness, but you know, sometimes you can't find unsweetened. I, I have noticed you can buy it in most grocery stores now or health food stores, but if yours doesn't, you could use the sweetened, the dried sweetened as well. And then chopped nuts, one cup, 120 grams, uh, coarsely chopped. I'm using walnuts. You could use pecans. You could, I mean, I've never tried it, but I think you could use some hazelnuts or even almonds. All this good stuff. <laughs> makes a carrot cake a carrot cake and then I've, I'm going to add one eight ounce can which is 227 grams of crushed pineapple I did drain my pineapple and that's going to add it adds a flavor but it also adds a little moisture to our uh, carrot cake you could use the same amount of applesauce I think that would work equally as well so that's a lot of stuff there. So I'm going to beat this. You could just fold it in with your spatula or wooden spoon, but I'm just going to do it with my mixer on. Okay, I'm going to mostly mixed in. I'll do the rest by hand. So that's it. Pretty easy. Like I said, once you have all your ingredients measured out, comes together really quickly. Okay, just stir it. 
This cake has been, you know, I have been making this, a carrot cake, since the 1970s. And you know, it never seems to go out of style. Everybody loves it. Used to be my signature dessert. <laughs> Take it to everything. Okay, that's good. So now we're just gonna pour it in here. Heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> So now, um, everyone's oven is a little different. I, you know, I'm going to say 35 to 40 minutes. So we didn't put a, beat a lot of air into this batter, so it is it doesn't rise a lot. It's quite dense, but it will turn a beautiful golden brown. And when it's done, it will, you will notice it starts to shrink just a little from the sides of the pan. And of course, this is a good time with the toothpick test. When inserted into the center, will come out clean. So I'm going to say 35 to 40 minutes. So our carrot cake is done. So put your pan on a wire rack. As you can see, it's just starting to come away from the sides of the pan. It did rise a little, beautiful golden brown. So what we're gonna do is let this cool in the pan on the wire rack for about 15 minutes. And then when we come back, we'll take it out of the pan. So now to take our carrot cake out of the pan, first take either a knife or I have an offset spatula, run it along the edges to make sure it's not sticking. And then just take my rack and flip it. You may need to use your gloves, <laughs> your, your oven mitts for this. Take that off. Peel back your parchment. And then I'm going to re-invert it. A little awkward with these large cakes, but we can do it. There we have it. So now what I'm gonna do is let this cool completely, and then when we come back, we will make our cream cheese frosting. So now for our cream cheese frosting, if you have a stand mixer like I have, use your paddle attachment, or you could use a hand mixer for this as well. The first thing you will need is seven tablespoons, 100 grams of butter. Have your butter at room temperature, and you could use, I'm using unsalted, I just prefer the flavor, but you could use a salted if that's what you want. So now I'm just gonna beat this on low speed just until it's nice and smooth. Scrape. And the next ingredient is confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing sugar. You will need one and a half cups, which is 180 grams. I did sift my powdered sugar because it tends to have lumps. So I'm just going to put that in here. And then I'm just going to mix it all together low speed because you don't want that sugar coming up in your face. Okay, so now everything's mixed together. I'm just going to give this a scrape. And then I'm going to increase the speed to medium high and I'm going to beat this for probably, you know, two, three minutes. I wanted to want to get uh, some air into this and make it very light and fluffy. So two, three minutes. Okay, so now. So this is what you're looking for. It's nice and light, fluffy. It's gonna be so good. 
So now, for flavoring, I'm going to add one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract, and then I'm going to also add one teaspoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. That's going to perk up all the flavors in our uh, frosting. I think it really makes a difference. So now I'm just going to beat that in. Okay. That's great. And our last ingredient. Of course, we need the cream cheese. So you will need 12 ounces, which is 340 grams of, I'm using a full fat cream cheese. And you want to make sure that your cream cheese is quite soft. You can see, I mean, you can really, you can see my finger, I can really press into that. So what I'm going to do is add it, not all at once, I'm going to add it gradually. You know, maybe uh, four additions, so I'll put some in. And then I'm going to beat this on medium speed until it's nice and smooth, and then I'll keep adding a little more. That's why you want your cream cheese quite soft here. Okay, one more. Okay, so we're done. Oh, I love this frosting. <laughs> so there we have our frosting. Beautiful, silky smooth. It's just. What's a carrot cake without cream cheese frosting? So now, I did put the carrot cake on a uh, cardboard cake board like this. You can get them online. You can get, get them in cake decorating stores. But, or you could just use, like if you had a serving platter. Or honestly, I'll tell you the truth. When I'm at home, I've, I think of a carrot cake as a very casual dessert. So I actually, I don't even take it out of the pan. I just put the frost, I cool it in the pan and then I just put the frosting on top and I cut the squares right out of the pan. So you don't have to do this. So now I'm just going to carrot cake. Yeah, I mean, you could put the frosting just on the top or you can put it on the sides, whatever you want. So now, if you, uh, I have an offset spatula here, or you could just use a knife, back of, or a spoon. So spread it. Like I said, you could do down the sides or just on the top. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Well, we'll do the sides, so just push it over. Spread it. Okay, so kind of make swirls or do whatever you want on the top. I typically just leave it this way. You could garnish the top with some chopped nuts or some more coconut if you, the dried coconut if you want, but I really don't think it needs anything, so. And then, let's take a knife. This cake stores really well. You could probably keep it in the refrigerator, I would say at least like five days, it, and you can freeze it for about a month, so. If you don't eat it all, then you could freeze it. Oh, doesn't that look gorgeous? See there? Oh, nice and moist. See the flex of the carrot? So let's try some. You can see why, once you taste it, why a carrot cake has been popular for so long. It is a nice spice cake. It is so moist and so flavorful. 
you know, you may think two teaspoons of cinnamon is a little much. I don't think so. I think it really brings all the flavors together. And then you have the carrots, which add a little bit of sweetness, the crushed pineapple, the coconut, the nuts. I mean, it really is a flavorful cake. And then the cream cheese frosting. A carrot cake has to have cream cheese frosting in, in my mind. And that just adds to, to the cake. And then it's so, it's got a nice bit of tanginess to it. Really nice. You have to try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Mm -hmm.